everybody. We're back. I am Jaffer Batika. I am Brendan Weinscott. And we are looking at the uh, final table of the lower bracket between uh, Timmy Wong and Min Tran. Whoever wins this game will advance to the final table against Dan Dargenia. So Exciting. Stakes are high. Um, we have Timmy Wong playing Wayland Blue Sun and Min Tran playing Andromeda. So Andromeda, pretty common in the, uh, in the tournament so far, but Blue Sun... Uh, Oh, quite a surprise here, uh, down in the in the final tables here. Got, like, got players checking for mulligans. We uh, saw a similar match up to this a couple rounds ago, we where did. where uh, Timmy burned out someone with with a triple scorched earth. Yep. Well, he's holding one in his hand right now, and uh, he's thinking long and hard about this. And without any ice, it's definitely a little a little scary to keep that. Yeah, it's pretty risky. I mean, he doesn't want any free accesses off of R&D. But, uh... but at the same time, he only has one agenda. Um, Which he can score out of hand. Correct. And he's got Jackson's to help as well. As we saw last game, Jackson can kind of bring you back into a game. It ended up not working out for him, but um, out for Timmy's opponent. But, uh, but uh, Jackson definitely allowed his, his opponent last round to get back into the game by throwing them NAPD contracts into the into archives and reshuffling them. Well, Jackson Howard is a weird card because he's uh, an NBA pretty much every deck. Yeah, I remember when he came out, everyone was like, this is an auto occlude, and you've got to have it in every deck. Um, you've definitely seen a lot, um, but uh, I think I think you can play without him. He just he does certain things for you. Uh oh, uh oh, broken sleeve. Got a broken sleeve there. What are we gonna do about that? Looks like he's got a replacement somewhere. Oh, good. He's fishing for one. Um, he did. Uh, Min elected to mulligan. He didn't like the nine he saw. The Andy, mulligans aren't as punishing. That's for sure. Yep. And there we go. New well, sleeve. with Andy, the the likelihood of uh, drawing into a, a pretty good hand is is uh, pretty good. Just when you draw nine cards. Uh, looks like Timmy's just going to reshuffle before giving it back to Min. Well, better safe than sorry. Yep. Yeah. I don't think anybody saw anything, but as you said, just got to make sure we follow rules and keep it, keep it as fair as possible. All right. I think we are off. Yep. And he just scores the hostile takeover. Turn one. Timmy starts with a bunch of money in a bad pub. Which, depending on how much uh, asset economy he's got in his deck, uh, might make a difference if, uh, if Min starts uh, aggressively running his, uh, his R&D to just uh, trash stuff up top. Yeah, I don't think we saw too much last time. Looking at the deck list here, I don't see much. No. So not too much of a risk for him. Mm. As with a card like Hostile Takeover that can be very swingy, um, you do kind of have to build a little bit around it um, to succeed with your deck. You know, it gives you a ton of money, but that pub, as you said, could really hurt with asset economy and things like that. But if you just don't put assets in your deck, well, <laughs> that drawback isn't there. Now we do know, since we've seen uh, Timmy's deck before, that he is also running Archer. So getting that uh, Hostile Takeover scored early means that uh, you know he can uh, he can uh, sacrifice it with impunity to to rest Ooh, Archer. Ooh, Andromeda! Ooh, He's yeah, that is a good open. Although uh, the question there is, uh, I mean, is he holding a dirty laundry? He is, so uh, he's not going to wow. have to lose a card in order to. Uh, that's a spicy start. Yeah, to, to make a medium run. So he's going to play medium. He's going to dirty laundry, get some money, get some tokens on medium. Mm -hmm. And he's up. Oh, he's thinking about the data sucker. I don't, I don't, do you just want to hit R&D here? I, I think. Nope, he plays, the, he plays the dirty laundry. Oh, and he hits an agenda. Uh, takes Jason. a geothermal right off the bat. Gains the money back with a. Gets a token on medium. He's back up to five credits. Has medium on the board with the token. He Goes runs again. aggro. Yep. Just being aggressive. Why not? Let's see. Oh, wow. He had a second one. Wow. Luckily, it was a hostile takeover, so it was only one point. That's still tough for Timmy, though, losing uh, three agenda points Definitely. right off the bat. And he likes to play Plash Greed at last turn. You've got to watch out for that punishing. Well, I mean, you know, there could be, he could be holding uh, three uh, punitive counter strikes in his hand. Right. Plenty yeah. of money to score or Smart to use it. So. Smart play by Min. Yeah. Does have to discard a card, but. Uh, and. Looks like he hasn't he has some, chosen yet. No, he has not chosen yet. But he has some redundant stuff in his hand. I, I think he can let some stuff go. He has a second medium. I mean, uh, 
obviously installing a second medium uh, while uh, while R and D is uh, still unprotected would be pretty terrific for him. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that. Uh, Timmy has got to uh, ice up R&D as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, Timmy, Timmy's going to prioritize that, and then having that second medium is pretty useless. And he discards a medium. Mr. Lee, though. And the dirty laundry, of course. Timmy plays a Jackson Howard and then immediately uses it. Looks like he got another one, posted bounty. Wow. So the top of Timmy's deck was just rife with agendas. He's got Enigma 2 and another piece of ice, so at least he has some ways to protect himself now. Looks like he has his play set of, <laughs> of Jackson Howards to start out the game. He's protecting yep. R&D. No, he has to. Not, you know, he has a, a medium with already two tokens on it. There's no way he can just leave that open. Interesting. He discarded his last piece of ice. I mean, I guess Jackson can shuffle it back in, but... I think I'd rather have it in hand. Uh, you know, he's got five cards in hand. I don't think he has to worry about it too much. I mean, who knows? I mean, Min could get lucky uh, hitting his hand, but I think he's willing to take his chances. Uh, as a court player, I just never like letting runners in if, if I can stop them. Uh, yeah, perhaps that's a bad attitude. Especially considering that uh, he is sitting across from a criminal player and uh, account siphon costs zero to play, so that's... Yeah. It would not be a surprising move on, on Min's part if he had it in hand. Is he running any? Let's see. No, I, I think he's, yeah, three yep. account siphons. Yep, yep. I mean, not surprising at all, but just wanted to double check. And he's got two data suckers in hand, as well as uh, some economy, it looks like. And another, another Anarch card. Oh, I believe that was the other uh, medium you mentioned earlier. Well, so data sucker with, a, with an open HQ and open archives means... Got to test them. Yeah. Ah, uh, it was the Wendigo. Okay. Uh, Wendigo would be great if he had more ice, but uh, as it is uh, positional, so it's not really going to matter at this stage. That makes a lot more sense why he discarded it. Wendigo is a one of in uh, Timmy's deck. It's a pretty neat addition, but as Jaffer said, not very useful at the moment. You know, not without more ice in play. Min draws a card for his third click. Oh, there's it. There it is. Uh oh. I mean, luckily Timmy's still got a fair amount of money left, but. Losing half your credits, that's still pretty punishing. And uh, Min floats the two tags from Account Siphon. <laughs> he uses agenda counters from Nationals. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, he's, uh, like, Timmy has only got uh, five credits. Um, he would need to triple Scorch uh, Min to kill him outright, and that would require nine credits, which right. he does not have. Yeah, so. Min's not worried about that at the moment. No. Uh, I do wonder how long he will float those tags, if ever. I mean, uh, we do know that uh, the Min is running uh, some good resources. He's running uh, John Massanori. Um, the Mr. Lee in his, in his trash. Security testing. So um, that's good stuff to keep in play, which would be every reason to get rid of the tags. But uh, for, the, for the moment, uh, it's just going to hang on to him. Looks like power shutdown is being considered by Timmy. I uh, uses Jackson to draw a couple more cards. Looks like a Taurus. And a curtain wall. All right. Well, that'll help him get going, although with the lower money, it's definitely... Definitely harder to play. Yeah. Oh, he's playing an archer in front of HQ. That'll be exciting. And uh, the Taurus over archives. I think both of those... Well, maybe the, the one over archives has to be a bluff, because uh, I don't think that he wants to uh, to completely empty out his uh, his credit pool just to, to res the Taurus for a trace that he can't win. And, I mean, he... He has Jackson to protect archives. He doesn't really need that there. Yeah, I think he's just bluffing. Min runs the Jackson, leaves it. So Min chooses to trash it. Gets a data set sucker token? No, it doesn't get the data sucker token. Oh, right, right. Sorry. Yeah. Central servers yeah. only. Yep. Mm -hmm. And did he just choose HQ? He did. Timmy raises the archer. There it goes. Boom. Which uh, blows up both the, uh, the data sucker and, and the, the medium. medium. That's, that's pretty good for Timmy. Yep. That's, all right, that'll set back Min a little bit. And it also means it's gonna, keep, uh, it's gonna keep Min out of HQ for a while. I mean, he's gotta get, uh, he's gotta get his Sentry Breaker up before he can start hitting HQ. I mean, well, unless he sneak doors in through, uh, through the back way. Well, I mean, our Archer isn't as scary now. Um, with no programs on the board. Yeah, it's true. But, I mean, uh, he wants to press his advantage. He wants to, you know, do the things criminals do, which is uh, get into HQ. I mean, uh, 
you know, if you, if you can throw a ferry out there, ferry, then emergency shutdown, that's a great place to be. Definitely. Most definitely. He looks like he's considering the second medium now. He's also got daily cast and other data suckers. So, I mean, he can re rebuild quite quickly. Uh, but without those extra tokens, that definitely slows him down. Yeah, I, th I don't think he can play the daily cast because he's floating the two tags. He's got to get. Ri I think he's got to get rid of the uh, the tags first, and uh, I don't think it's worth it at this point. Uh, I think he wants better uh, better resources than daily cast. I mean, daily cast is good, but clearing the tags to get it out, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, the corp is probably is most likely going to trash that immediately. Oh, certainly. I mean, even though Timmy only has three credits, like, it, it's, a, it's a worthy target. There's the second medium, mm -hmm. and he's running. He's just betting on Timmy not having enough money to res that piece of ice. Yep. Nope, but it's an enigma, reses it, and uh, Min loses a click. Nope. Oh, that was his last side. click, so just ends the run. But definitely keeps him out for a little while. Yeah, with, uh, with the medium out there, you definitely don't want to let him in. Yep. That just gets worse over time. Yeah. Donna's campaign was drawn by Timmy. Looks like he's playing another Jackson. And, and gains two credits. <laughs> so last time he played Jackson, he played it and resed it right away and then used it. Um, this time, obviously, his hand's full, so he doesn't need to use it. Uh, I wonder if uh, Min will take the bluff and make a run just to see what it is. I think you take it. I mean, um, he's only got five credits, but uh, even if it's a pad campaign, it might be worth trying to choke him out. Got a passport on the table and spends another click drawing. Oh, well, with a passport on the table, that means that the uh, Enigma is uh, pretty much not there anymore. Ooh, short gamble. All right. Just when Min's economy was looking a little low, he's... Runs R&D. Yep. Yep. Use that medium to full effect. He does it for the last click, so he only has to spend one. Uh, he doesn't care about the losing a click. Oh, he doesn't have to spend one because he has the bad publicity oh, right. from hostile takeover. Yep. Yep. So, yep. yep, free hit on R&D. And Sees we a see. hive. Yeah. So that would be a good one for Timmy, though he's looking a little low on money. So. Yep, he pops the, uh, pops the Enigma back into hand for three credits. Yep. This isn't Draws doing the hive, uh, which is a which is a better piece of ice for him. Yeah. This isn't doing anything for me. I'll make some money off of it. Yep. Sounds like a Wayland attitude to me. <laughs> I think it's a good call. I mean, like, you know, normally you would just install over it once it uh, stopped being effective. But uh, with Blue Sun, you can't just pull it back into your hand for the money. Yeah, and if it's effective somewhere else as well, you know, yeah. you can always put it somewhere else. And uh, in his hand, like, a passport can only affect the central service. He could put it out on a remote server exactly. and score behind it. Uh, with impunity, unless uh, unless Min is running an inside job, which is pretty likely in a criminal deck, but still have to draw it. Nope, there goes yep. the hive over R and D. Good choice. And there goes the enigma on the remote. Yep. Now he can't actually res both of them. So question there is, uh, you know, is he? I think you protect R and D in this case. It's yeah. it's just a Jackson. You can use it to shuffle the other Jackson into your deck. You know, with medium on the table, you're worried about that getting more counters. Another short gamble for Min. Yeah, but as we saw in uh, Min's last game, I mean, that uh, that event economy, I mean, you, you get a lot of money, a lot of the burst economy right off the bat, but it doesn't last forever, especially if there's taxing ice out there. It's very true. His last game, he started up with a ton of credits, but by maybe turn five or so, he was he was in a little trouble there. Wearing down hard, hard to uh, stay in the four credits necessary to steal an NAPD contract, for sure. Yeah. Looks like he's thinking over what he's going to do for his last two clicks. I mean, he, he saw the uh, the hive on the last R&D hit, so I think he knows what that one is. Like, does he run it, just it, force it up? Or? It seems pretty obvious. Eh, he just yeah, clears, clears the, the tags. tags. Yeah. <laughs> he's had enough of that Once now that Timmy's getting some more money. Yeah, I think he's got to stabilize his economy, and uh, he's, he's probably going to throw the daily cast out there unless he pulls a, a better resource. Timmy drew another enigma. He's got a couple options here. I mean, power shutdown, not super effective at the moment. Jackson doesn't need to play. Scorched isn't going to be used anytime soon. Uh, so he's basically just got a couple pieces of ice. Oh, he's going to use his Jackson right away to shuffle his other one in, and he's one to go. I don't think he actually had to show that one to go there. And is that a double enigma there? <laughs> it is a double enigma. 
Well, he's uh, he's uh, protecting that Adonis campaign. I think overprotecting it, but uh, yeah. he's probably setting up a future scoring server. I think. Yeah, and I mean, with Blue Sun, as always, you know, you res one of those, and you can always bounce it back to your hand. Yeah. And with the double Enigma there, it's uh, it's pretty safe since Passport can only affect the central servers. And uh, if he's worried about inside job, then uh, having two pieces of ice there means that whatever goes in there, unless uh, unless Min starts to get real breakers out, is uh, pretty safe. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm he he is still holding his posted bounty. He might just try to um, get three counters on the posted bounty and wait until uh, he can draw the uh, the third scorch. But uh, that is also a risky move. Seems like a good idea. Another short gamble. I see a femme fatale in Min's hand, and he runs, testing, testing Timmy. So if Timmy raises both pieces of ice here, he won't have any money for the Donis campaign, but he chooses not to raise the first one, raises the second. Min spends his other clicks to run R&D. Now R&D is undefended. He's going to get to see two cards. Oh, another one. So score is now 5 to 0. Yeah. Wow. And he pulled the Atlas, which I'm sure uh, Timmy would have loved to put out in that scoring server. That would have been a great card to get scored, yeah. but unfortunately not. Just pulled right off the top of R&D. That, that was a tough tough turn for Timmy. You had to play the Donis campaign to get some money going, but he, he couldn't afford to protect it and R&D. Yeah. So. And with a medium there, I think that maybe he, that might have been the better choice. I mean, even if Min had gotten through to the Adonis campaign, it would have cost him three to trash it, and that might have just been worth it to, you know, to cost uh, to cost Min some money. Yeah, it's it's a tough call. Yeah. Looks like he's playing a curtain wall. And then the oversight, oversight. AI. So, <laughs> well, there's some economy for him. So that's uh, yep, yeah, and that's probably going to keep uh, Min out of uh, out of R and D for a while. Now we did see the Fem. In, uh, in Min's hand. He could play to, to get past the, uh, the curtain wall, but um, bypassing curtain wall will not trash it with, uh, with Oversight AI on it. That's so. correct. And it'll spend most of his turn, too, because he only has nine credits, so he'll be spending right. that to play it. Then he'll need to get some credits before he gets through. Right. And it, it would work. He'd get to see a couple cards, but it just doesn't seem like a very useful whole turn. Right. And there's always a fine line playing uh, runner where you're trying to keep the pressure on, but you're you, you don't want to keep the pressure on at the expense of wasting. You know, people call call it click compression. You know, in this case, doing that would not be very good click compression. He'd be spending most of his turn just to get one access. Gains a credit. Looks like he might be doing it though. Gains another credit. He's going for Plays it. Plays the fam. All right. I mean, he is on five points. If he hits something, it's true. Yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, and if he gets all the way through Oh, that, no, oh. he's going there. He thinks wow. that's an agenda. Ooh. Spends one to get by. Adonis, Adonis campaign. campaign. You cannot trash it. Yeah. Oh, you can see his reaction there. Yeah, when well, he also just played the fem on, on a server that didn't really matter. Like the yep. fem on, on, the, uh, on the curtain wall would have given him some multi-access because... Uh, Timmy could not afford to res the uh, the hive that came immediately after it. Right, and w well, against Blue Sun too, Fem is just a right. lot more critical that you hit the right piece of ice at the right time because you right. can just bounce it and get rid of that token. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Timmy uh, pulls the uh, the curtain wall back into hand for 14 credits. So that's a, a wreck. Big amount of money there. Yeah, that was that was a big play by Min. Mm -hmm. I, he, you could see by his reaction, he had spent his whole turn counting on that being a two point agenda, and he just it was not. It was a bluff. And now uh, Min is uh, very low on funds. Timmy, so Timmy's the, playing that curtain wall on yeah. HQ. He's uh, opening a, a wide scoring window, I think. He's a plenty of money, iced servers, and uh, and uh, Min uh, does uh, not have much of a breaker suite going. Timmy's you know, he's not jumping on it. I think I think he's being smart here. He, he could have just played the Pirate Direct in advance, advance, but he's only got two Enigmas protecting it, and one of them is Femmed. So if uh, Min has any sort of trick up his sleeve... Uh, the inside job. Yeah, Tim, Timmy could be in trouble. So he, he's playing it smart. He's building up his defenses a little more, and I think in a turn or two, you know, as you said, Min was kind of low. He doesn't really have that many resources. There's the Hive. Um, he doesn't really have that many resources other than like a single trick or two out, in his, out of his hand. By that point, he's, the window will still be open to score that priority rack, I think. 
And the Hive is a, an expensive uh, piece of ice for him in to break because uh, Timmy has of yet scoring no agenda. So that is a five three, subroutines. Yeah, I five subroutines, three strength agenda. Would cost six to get through with Corroder, and that is not uh, not a small amount of money well, from where a, Min is standing. There's a security testing. And finally, raises the Adonis campaign. Bounces the Fem to Enigma back to his hand. Mm -hmm. Gets some more money. Things are swimming swinging Timmy's way. However, Min is still at five points, so one access could change the game, or finish the game, rather. Oh, look at that. Another agenda in Timmy's hand and a Project Atlas. Yeah. Now. So that's that's one he could take advantage of having this score window. It's, it's much quicker and easier to use. It's just a matter of can he protect it for the one turn it needs to be on the table. Yeah, and I think that it, the, against a criminal, it is too dangerous to install it now because an inside job would just hop right over that piece of ice there. He is holding on to a piece of ice. He could. Yep, there it goes. Puts the Enigma back out. So that is Enigma, Enigma in front of that uh, Adonis server. I mean, granted, also, he, if he wanted to play that Project Atlas, he'd have to trash the, the yeah. Adonis that he just rezzed. So I think now he's content to just get his money, build up a big advantage, and then try and freeze Min out. And Min does have the uh, security testing. He's probably going to point it at archives, but... Uh, that isn't uh, an unrest piece of ice. We don't know what that is. And uh, uh, that was the bluff earlier. That the was the bluff. Uh, oh, that's yeah, like yeah. the Taurus. Ah, yep. but if he does run it, you that's know, that could be dangerous. There yeah. It goes. Oh, there it goes. with that much money, that yeah. plascrete's gone. Yep. <clears throat> Ooh, such a simple, unsuspecting run just to get some money, and there yeah. goes the plascrete. There goes the plascrete. So now, Oof. now he only needs the double scorch, and he's got he's got plenty of money to do it with. So. Min has got to be very careful now about the runs he makes. Granted, uh -huh. um, Timmy does not have the Sea Sorcerer midseason in his hand. You know, he only has one Scorched Earth, but if you can open up the uh, if you can uh, open up that scoring server to uh, score the Project Atlas, uh, put a couple of tokens on it, that, uh, that could radically change the game. And of course, uh, Min has uh, not been running uh, Timmy's hand at all, so he doesn't know what's in there. You know, for all he knows. Uh, there could be, you know, a sea source and two scorches there, and uh, dare he take the chance to to run at a server? Yeah, I mean, he saw a ton of agendas off the top of the deck early in the game, so he's got to wonder if Timmy's even drawn any. He plays the daily cast. He's going to get some money now. He's in dire need of it. <laughs> Using virus tokens. For <laughs> it's always always interesting seeing what people put on the cards to indicate those. Yeah, we're seeing uh, some of our uh, some of our FFG tokens out there. I think. Uh, yeah, the virus tokens. I love them. They're uh, the credit tokens from a couple of tournament kits ago, and the click trackers as well. Yeah. All right. Got Timmy. He took a bunch of money off Adonis. Mm-hmm. And he stalls. Pyrek. All right, he's going for it now. I think. I think he's just trying to even up the score at this point, maybe res uh, that big curtain wall. Yeah, I mean, that's if he scores the prior direct, that curtain wall is definitely coming up. Yeah. Curtain wall, once it's rezzed, I mean, it protects HQ quite well, but I, I have a feeling he's probably going to bounce it to his hand afterwards to get even more money. And then he can play it in front of R&D you know, once Hive has less, less subroutines and whatnot. I mean, as it is not a click action, too, I mean, you know, uh, a, a curtain wall is basically just a bank of 14 credits to really nail down the, uh, the sea source trace. Uh, it, oh, it, yeah, it is indeed for coming. sure. Of course, security testing uh, on, on uh, archives with no hardware in play <laughs> he has nothing to fear anymore, so. Now he just gets money from it. Uh, Looks like he's got a special order, another daily casts, and I can't make out that last card. Oh, there's two more cards out there. Data, uh, data sucker. Ooh, HQ interface. A lot for for all the good that HQ interface will do him because uh, without <laughs> a sneak door beta, without anything really useful to get past uh, the archer. I mean, trying to use Femme Fatale to get past an archer would cost him ten credits, which I don't think anybody wants to do. No, and I think he's only running one. So unless he has a way to get that off the table and then back on. Yeah, he's only running one. So passes back to Timmy. <coughs> Timmy's in a. Pretty nice spot right now. I mean, granted, if he wants to score that party wreck, he's got to discard another card. Yep, but there he goes. Yep. yep. And there's a curtain wall. There's a curtain wall, yep. <laughs> so 
Not only is it going to keep him out of HQ, Ooh. but there's a, a bank of 14 credits. And uh, I just, see two scorch. Oh, no, no, just one scorch. Just one scorch but the uh, mid season Mid-seasons is there, too. But That's what it. he can't do, though, is is allow uh, allow Min to, to steal a two-point agenda. He can, let, uh, he can let a hostile go if he draws another one. Just let Min steal it and then nail him down with the, uh, with the mid-seasons. But... Uh, but other than that, that is the only option in terms of midseason. Now, I think that what he wants, uh, what he would rather have, is uh, either to, uh, to put the posted bounty in that server and just uh, triple advance it and just kind of use it when needed, or um, to, to search his deck for a sea source, which I'm not sure whether or not he's using. I don't think he is, actually. But No, no sea source. using just midseason replacements instead. That's interesting. Well, I guess the midseasons, you can really hit somebody with it, nail somebody with it, and just give them more tags than they can get rid of on a yeah, turn. Yeah, you can overload them, and, yeah. I mean, as we saw in the earlier game. Yeah, that's yeah. how you hit them with the triple scorch. Right. He you know, gave him five tags, and <laughs> that's a lot of effort to remove all those tags. Dirty laundry run on archives. So now that Min doesn't have any hardware, he's using archives to get back a big chunk of economy. Yeah, building his credits back up, uh, putting his uh, data, su data sucker tokens on. So I think Timmy, you know, Timmy's doing pretty well, but he's, he's got to be careful. He's, as you said, one two-point agenda away from losing. And that means just one random access right off the top of r and I mean... Uh, Especially with uh, Medium out there with two tokens already. Right. Three and, cards. Uh, he's charging his Data Sucker. Um, we have to assume that he's, uh, he's looking, uh, looking for his Parasite to just eat that, uh, that hive. Timmy's... Pulls up, uh, the, uh, pulls up the Taurus for the five credits. Why not? Yep. There's no further, uh, no further hardware to trash. Drew an Ice Wall. That's quite useful. Well, ice Wall is even more useful. You can throw that over... Uh, Throw that over archives and uh, and kind of slow down the uh, the data sucker uh, security testing runs. Yep. And that Taurus bouncing that Taurus is also really good because you never know where it's going to come back down and you have to play around it. Then mm -hmm. and it looks like he threw the S wall on the scoring oh, there server. Goes, uh, there goes Project Atlas. Yeah, he's just making sure. He can over advance and score it next turn. Then he'll be at, he'll be at five points and a Project Atlas with a counter too, which things are looking up for Timmy. Yep. I think he's. He's in a good spot right now. Yeah, Min got off to a really strong start, but that has uh, slowed down quite a bit. And uh, just knowing that uh, Timmy has a uh, has a ton of money and a ton of money possible through uh, through his blue sun ability. Special ring for Croder means that he does have to slow down a bit. That Croder will certainly help, although the uh, the Enigmas are going to stop him from getting into that s scoring server. Right, but I don't think that's where he's going. I think he's uh, throwing out the corroder to get into uh, to get into R and D because he did score the uh, he did score the Pryrek, which means that there is only two subroutines on the hive now, which means correct. It'll only cost him four to get through, um, unless he you know he drops the strength down with the data sucker, um, so three to get through. But it's it's not cheap. It's not cheap, but he's got a lot of money now with all yeah. those security testing mm -hmm. runs on the archives, yeah. and the daily casts going. I I think he can afford to do a run or two. He's thinking about it hard. I think he just trying to figure out what to trash, what's uh, more valuable to him at this point. Although I think he, I mean, he knows that uh, that, that is an agenda in that scoring server. Um, so he, he could win it if he could steal it. But because he can't get past that enigma, he's got he's to think of something else there. <laughs> I think he's, no. he's telling himself he's thinking too hard. No. Yep, just trashing that data sucker. Oh, okay. He's not, not worried about getting a parasite at the moment, I don't think. But he does have the Croder, does hit R&D. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nope. One, nope. two, three. Ooh, safe. Very, very lucky uh, for Timmy there. But uh, now that uh, now that Min oh, has... Oh, he's running again. Uh-oh. What's going to be? He's trashing something. Nope. Another piece of ice. Oh, Seeing all those cards and yeah, no, well that was uh, that was Min's last click. So I mean, Timmy now has to has to protect R and D a little harder because he cannot allow those kind of medium runs and anymore. Yeah, Min's got more than enough money to make a couple more the next turn. Pulls back the blue sun for fourteen credits. The curtain wall, yeah. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, curtain, curtain oh, wall. Oh, and he drew an overstate AI. Wow, that's that's yeah. a really good draw. He just yeah, slams down good. that curtain wall and mm -hmm. goes right at it. Yep. yep. Whew. Timmy with a good draw, pulling him. Boy, right. and it advances Ooh. the uh, advances the Atlas again. He's going to uh, he's going to have it uh, over advanced with two tokens on it, and uh, that is a great place to be. Yeah, 
being able to grab two scorched earths or you know any any sort of pieces you need. I mean, he could even potentially just grab another agenda. Mm -hmm. Although I imagine he'll probably go for the scorched earths with mid seasons in hand. Well, it depends. I mean, that that scoring server. I mean, uh, unless unless Min can figure out a way to get past that Enigma. I mean, it's 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 funny that like Enigma over the central servers with Passport is basically not there, but on the remote server, Passport can't do anything about it, so it is impenetrable. It is, but uh, he doesn't want to take that extra turn and score, you know. Uh, once, he, once he scores that Project Atlas, he can just search up two Scorches, you know, mid-season Scorch, Scorch, and finish him off in that, like, in, in a turn. Yeah. He, he, it, it's basically speeding it up by a turn, which I think is critical here with that medium and all the credits. I think so. All the credits. Yeah, you're right. All the tokens, rather. But you are right. If he, if he does go to, to try and score for the win, um, <laughs> I don't think Min can do anything on that remote server. I think Min's just going to have to push all in on R&D. It looks like he's but trying with, that. With a, with a loaded medium, I mean, he can just uh, he can be uh, looking at quite a lot of uh, Timmy's deck. And, and the odds of, of eventually hitting an agenda this way are, are pretty high. Although he won't see too many new cards. After going last turn, yeah. you know, Timmy only drew one card. Something I, I see some players sometimes forget. You know, they make a medium run and then they make a run the next turn. They only see one new card. Generally, you want to trash a couple cards. You want to wait to trash a couple cards, or you want to wait a couple turns yeah. to make the run. And unfortunately, with that uh, with that big curtain wall out in front of R and D, like that's uh, gonna be pretty expensive to get through with uh, with Corroder. So I mean, he probably would want to cheat his way through an inside job or, or something along those lines if he could that's his best bet i think at this point is drawing drawing um drawing some sort of let's see what is he, what does he have in his deck that he could pull out of here i mean if he had a scavenge to to uh, to move the fem token i mean he that that i think would do it I, uh, I think actually legwork might be his best bet here mm. he's got he's got oh, he's only got one in the deck I mean, it obviously requires... Oh, no, runs R&D, pays enough credits to trash, trash it. Yeah. All right. He, he, that's all he's doing. He's not getting to access cards, but he, he feels it's worth trashing yeah. trashing that ice, which it probably is. I mean, that's... Well, I mean, it's further denying Timmy the uh, the 14 credits right. of popping it back into his hand. I mean, that's, that is definitely, uh, definitely worth doing. Runs archives to keep Timmy honest. Yep. But uh, Timmy kind of, of course... That? Security testing? I think he might have forgotten to get the credits off his security testing. I think he did. Uh, now, is Timmy going to try to just score this Atlas, or is he going to leave it a little longer? It's pretty safe. It's pretty safe, but I think, I mean, you're super worried about R&D at this point, yeah. I think. You know, oh, he bounces, bounces that. Draws sees another curtain wall. Wow. And he's got the money to res it too. Yep. Which just a hard res it. Doesn't have to oof. doesn't have to oversight AI. Yep. Uh, yep. There it goes. And just when you think Min's back in the game, Timmy draws another good card off his deck. He scores the Project Atlas with just one token. Well it might not need it. I mean he does have mid seasons and uh, one, sc one scorch. Yep. Yeah all he really needs is a second scorch with that plash grid off the table and that's that's I mean, uh, Min's only plash creed. With with uh, mid seasons, though, he would have to uh, let uh, Min score uh, steal an agenda, which oh, about right. the only one, the, forgot, the only one yes. that he could let go would be a hostile takeover. And I, I think Min knows that, which I think means that he would try probably try to avoid it. There's there's not a lot of good plays there. I mean, he could steal it, get mid season, or he could leave it and just let uh, let Timmy score it, and that would just put uh, Timmy at six, and then you know right. one away from just another hostile out of hand. That would make a lot of sense. So it looks like they're discussing something. Min's trying to get confirmation before he makes a move. Now I think he's just thinking. You're getting four credits oh. then? Four credits. Okay. Just getting four credits. Uh, yeah, he spent a lot of money getting past the curtain wall last time. Yeah, he doesn't have any way to recur credits too well. He's Project Atlas. Timmy searches for, Search for Project Atlas. another Project Atlas. Yeah, oh. yeah. He's going to throw that in the scoring server. And as you said, that scoring server is pretty safe, which means he's just going to throw it right in there and then wait until next turn to score it and win. Yep, and that is the uh, that is the game point, too. Yep, they're both at five. 
wonder what Min will do. Does he, does he have a way to get out of this? He's got to get through two Enigmas. Uh, I forget what the, the top card is. But, I mean, the Enigmas alone, he needs something to get through those. He does have a Yogg in his deck. Uh, if he can draw that, that would help. But, of course, that costs five credits, and he's only got four. Timmy just makes extra sure. Covers R&D, hedge funds for some money, and installs the project. Yep. So this is it then. So Min has to has to win on this turn. He has one turn. Yeah, he has one turn because otherwise, uh, yeah, Timmy will just uh, one, two, three, score that one out. So about Min's best option here is either to take a legwork run at HQ, which may not produce any results given what he's seen so far. So that or to uh, to take the medium run at R and D. You could take the medium run, but he. D I mean, Timmy's got tons of money. I don't. Yeah. I don't think he can expect to get through R and D. Maybe he digs for the Yogg. He could, depending on what that that third piece of ice is, if it doesn't require too much money to break. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I'm seeing Min's hand. He's holding a special order. He could get the Yogg, but, but that's it's, an extra click, yeah, though. It's an extra click and a credit. And two extra, cre yeah, an extra yeah. credit there. So. All right. See. So well, he takes the security testing run at archives, so he has six credits now. He could look for the Yogg. Okay. Yog install it, but he'd still only have one credit left over. He's getting two credits. He's going for R&D. He's going for it. Let's see what happens. He's thrown all of the money in the bag. Well, one of those is definitely a curtain wall, so... Uh, he's got to know that. He's got to know that the curtain wall went back down there. He's got eight credits. So is eight credits enough to get through two pieces of ice? That's what it comes down to, I think. It depends on where the curtain wall is. I'm pretty sure the curtain wall is on no, the outside. Right. I think no so as well. Reds. Whoa, no Timmy. Reds. Oh, my God. Oh. No res. Whoa. No res, and then he just rolls the... For very first card, too. Oh, my goodness. And he wow. Had Runner wins the game. Wow. I probably should have cleared virus counters, but cleared yeah, virus, cleared we, virus counters. We blew out the mics. Oh. He had one. I already forfeited one. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> got so excited we blew out the mics. Yeah, but uh, wow, yeah. I mean, uh, Min did, or sorry, uh, Timmy did not res that curtain wall, which means that Min rolled sure. that uh, rolled that uh, uh, geothermal fracking right off the top of the deck. Didn't even need the medium. Yeah, which is uh, just uh, mind-blowing because uh, Timmy, uh, all he had to do was keep Min out for one turn, and that was Min's last click, too. Yeah. He had the money. Why didn't he res it? I, I'm not quite sure, actually, to be honest. And he had Enigma resed on the um, the other server. Well, I guess it was his last click too, so he couldn't have run anywhere else. He all of his marbles were in one bag. Maybe he maybe he knew the um, he could get through. Maybe he did the math and mm. just figured might as well not res it. Yeah, but, but with the medium tokens on there, I mean, he would have had five medium tokens on there. He would have been seeing quite a lot of cards. I mean, granted, the geothermal fragment is right on top, but even if it was the fifth card down, right. he would have it's seen it. It's a huge risk. Yeah. yeah, hopefully we can get an answer sometime soon about uh, why he didn't res that. But in the meantime, congratulations on, uh, to Min Tran, the Belgium national winner. And he's uh, going back to the final table to play uh, Dan Dargenio one more time. He's looking for, for revenge, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, as we saw earlier, he he uh, made a, a small mistake that cost him the game against Dan, which threw him in the lower bracket to begin with. Um, but uh, fought his way back, and uh, it is going to be a very exciting, uh, very exciting game at the final table. Hopefully, if we uh, we don't blow out the mics again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of hard. This is, these are exciting, tense matches. Um, just before we say goodbye to Timmy. Um, before we get, say goodbye to Timmy, uh, he's he's gone so far this weekend. He's got third overall with two decks that nobody really expected to to get this far. You know, Gabriel Gabriel Santiago has always been good and was, has always been a top tier deck, but um, it's kind of been overshadowed by Andromeda the past past couple of seasons. 
and then the blue sun deck is just super innovative. I, it's it's a, it's a card that just recently came out. People expected to see a lot of it, but they didn't really expect to see it do well. Um, but just the little nuances of his deck, you know, with the um, with the one Wendigo and the the hive, the hive, the Taurus, um, the oversight AI, oversight AIs on the current walls. It just all came together. Plus the scorches, of course, and the one mid seasons. It all comes together just to uh, welcome back. I'm Brendan Weisscott. I'm Jennifer Batiga. Um, as I was saying, Timmy's Blue Sun deck just has a bunch of interactions that really, I think, is what propelled him this far. Well, certainly. I mean, it, it, it is a very new identity, but uh, kudos to Timmy for to really figuring it out right away uh, yeah. to, to play as far as he did in, in the World Championship. So congratulations to him to at least getting that far with, uh, with an unusual deck. Yeah. All right. So we say goodbye to Timmy. Um, we've got Min Tran and... Danny D. Um, I, I cannot pronounce his last name. Dargenio, <laughs> I think. Uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so they have faced each other before in the finals. So uh, at this point, I mean, uh, I think that they they may know each other's decks pretty well. I don't know how many more surprises they have for each other. So now it's just a question of knowing what they know. Can they play correctly? And I mean, Min Min has a little bit of a hill to climb. You know, he's got to win two games here. Yep. Dan Danny can afford a loss. Uh, Dan can afford a loss and still win the next game to take all the marbles, take a, take home the prize. So, yeah. um, speaking of which, what are the prizes? Uh, well, uh, in addition to the uh, in addition to the backpacks uh, that they that they just gave out. Uh, yeah. Sorry, hold on. Say we got a lot of clapping. I think I think people are cheering Timmy here for getting so far. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, they gave him the uh, gave him the uh, one of the world championship backpacks, and if you can see on there, it has uh, has a an as yet unspoiled card from an upcoming release. Yeah. Where is that uh, card art from? Yeah, it looks we, it looks very Genteki like to me. <laughs> Two twins and the, the perfection of the symmetry and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess uh, you'll get to find out soon uh, where that card art is coming from. But uh, yep, yeah, everybody's just con congratulating Timmy on uh, some really great play. Uh, great deck building. Hard fought games. Um, yeah, so the top four get the bag, correct? Yep. And then uh, after that, uh, after that, we're just at the final table. The, the winner of the final table will uh, get to uh, design a card and put it into a future release. Yeah. That's that's so exciting. I mean, no, I mean, uh, all you, of our games have that. You also get to get card, to right? get, also get to get your picture on a card too. Like so, if, I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, so if if uh, for those of you out there who have uh, who have seen uh, the architect, uh, Jeremy Zorm's champion card, uh, I, I, you've probably seen Jeremy Zorm wandering around over the course of the weekend or or playing here at these final tables since he took Call of Cthulhu and, and Warhammer Conquest. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, Jeremy on that card. <laughs> it's diddle diddle version of D Jeremy, I think. And, uh, yeah. Looking quite unusual without his uh, signature black baseball cap on the <laughs> card. But uh, that's I don't I don't know if that's a uh, very bioroid. Uh. Yeah, for for those of you back home, Jeremy's a local here, so uh, we see him in in the game center uh, quite often. I play against him so. quite a lot. Uh, and I gotta say, like uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, taken many a beating to uh, many time world champion. As we uh, all have, I think. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it, they get to design a card. They get to work with the designers. Um, they send in a submission. The designers will go back and forth with them, let them know, you know, what's what's doable and you know what's a little too overpowered necessarily. What will fit into the sort of theme of the cycle? That too, yes. Um, it's very important to us that you you get the card out. Um, so we we don't want it to be something that we won't see for five years down the road. Right. Now we haven't yet seen um, 2013 World Champion Jens Eriksson's champion I, card. That's still uh, still uh, in the pipeline. It is. I, I feel like I heard a rumor a while back. I mean, I don't remember for sure. I might have dreamt this, um, but I think I heard a rumor that it is coming out shortly. That's um, good. I mean, we, we we would love to see it uh, very soon because you know it, it is it is about the coolest prize I can think of. I mean, like you know, uh, I mean the, the the bags, the play mats, the tokens, you know, just miscellaneous game related stuff, but the immortality, the immortality of uh, having your face on a card and having a card that people play. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of architect uh, this tournament this weekend, season. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, you know, that this got to be very gratifying for Jeremy as a champion. So uh, whoever wins this final table, Dan or Min, right? You know, we'll get have to have that, that same kind of impact on the game. And th that is very exciting, you know, to to be able to impact a game that you love and and have played your way to the top of. Well, as you said, it's the immortality. I mean, being a winner, obviously, you know, we we um, we do a number of things to uh, to 
decorate the world champions, you know, we call them out. And uh, of course, many players know who they are. But even for the casual players at home, they, they don't have an idea who a world champion is. But when they open that card and they see that card and it has the little line in the bottom that says designed by world champion so and so, you know, everybody sees that card, anybody that plays the game. And so, that's you know that's a little more exciting I think. Oh, definitely, and you know if you if you've uh, you know if you've got your copy of uh, of Architect in your pocket and you see Jeremy wandering around, just walk right up to him, get his autograph. Yeah, he's, I mean he's a, he's a quiet guy. He can be a little intimidating. He's a, he's a big guy too, very yeah. tall, um, but he's very friendly. Um, he's always happy to talk, even if he answers in short sentences. It's not because he <laughs> not because he doesn't want to talk. It's just that's that's his way he is. So. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're wandering around, um, uh, if you're wandering around uh, worlds, you know we're we're closing in on the end of worlds, but uh, you know. Um, other people who have their faces on cards are around as well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, real life wizard Kevin Wilson is uh, is around. Um, I saw him last night. Yeah. Real life Donut Taganis, myself, <laughs> right is here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have uh, Tom Kapoor, who's a Call of Cthulhu right. world yeah, champion. Right. Yeah. You can see him as uh, the mage known as Magnus uh, yeah. in, in his uh, Call of Cthulhu champion card. And um, I don't remember if the X Wing cards are out yet, but we had Not a couple yet. world champ. We had both world champions were here for that yesterday. They were both in the top 32. So. That was uh, some fantastic play on the X-Wing players. And I got to say, like, uh, you know, you are more the X-Wing player than I, but, uh, y you know, even uh, being a novice X-Wing player that I am, it is still a great game to watch. Just well, that's the fun of it, right, is, like, anybody can really tell what kind of thing it is. Um, uh, we, you know... It, the spatial, not everybody necessarily has the spatial skills to understand how to move the ships, mm -hmm. but everybody knows, like, how everybody can judge, oh, wow, that was an awesome move, now he can shoot this guy or whatnot, and and so, you know, it, it's very easy to appreciate, I guess. Yeah. Um, so we just uh, we just got the word from Lucas that, uh, yeah, based on the bracket, um, if, uh, if Dan wins this next game, he wins the tournament, they won't play the second game, but... If uh, Min wins this game, then they play on one more time. So Min has to win twice. Dan only has to win once. And that is a lot Pressure's of pressure on, on Min. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, we hope he's up to it. Yep. All right. We're going to take a really short break. Um, and then we'll be back with the finals very, very shortly. Thanks for staying, uh, staying with us all, all day long with all this Netrunner. Uh, we'll be back with just a little more. See you soon. soon.